Hi, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman from the Jewish Executive Learning Network. Um, thanks for checking out today's clip. In today's video, I'd like to respond to a question I received from a subscriber to this YouTube channel uh, from someone who lives in Maryland. And uh, this is the question. I was asked, I want to know, how do you know what is your passion in life? What is your calling? I'm just reading it from the computer. I want to know, um, how do I figure out what do I do when I want to inspire or lead? The person goes on to write that I know I want to do something big. I want to inspire. Maybe be a leader. I have the abilities. I have the skills. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. In other words, the person's basically saying, um, I need to figure out how do I discover my talent? How do I discover my passion? Um, because I want to do something big and great and contribute. But I don't seem to be one of those people who knows what their thing is. So I have the tools, but where do I point them? What do I do? So this is actually a question I receive a lot. Number one, I receive this question a lot because people who know me know that um, I love to help people develop their potential. And I love to help people get what they want. So this is something that I get very regularly as a question. I'm on a mission to help people fulfill their dreams. So they say, hey, um, I'm not even sure what my dream is. Can you help me with that starting point question, let alone how to fulfill it? Another thing I'll tell you is this. A lot of people in life are driven by a sense of, of mission and they feel like they want to have a mission, but they're not even sure what it should be. And it's a very common question, especially in today's world, because if you stop and think about it, we live in a world that has such enormous tools. You have something like a Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or other tools that enable us to reach almost every single person on the globe, in theory, instantaneously with a message to touch their lives in some fashion. The question is, okay, I could reach them, but do I even have what to say? Do I even have a message to deliver? Do I have something worthwhile to share with them once I'm able to get their attention, you know? So it's interesting with all the sophisticated, rapidly changing toys that we have in this world to reach people and communicate and touch people's lives and blast out ideas. Question is, do we have any idea which way we should be pointing that tool? Should I be pointing it this way, that way? What should I even be doing with it? So I'm just sharing with you some ideas that I had uh, written to the person a response that I was going to respond by email, but that I make a video. So um, <laughs> another thing I'd share with you is that I think it's very important in life to have clarity as to what you think your mission and your dream and your passion is, because when you have that, it's like you have a generator inside of you that's like a self-propelling kind of generator. In other words, a lot of people walk around uh, and I speak to them and they're waiting for me or someone else from the outside to inspire them, to excite them, to make them feel good and alive. But you know what? When you have that clarity and that mission and that purpose clear, you, you don't need somebody, a Rabbi Bregman or somebody else to inspire you from the outside. You're your own generator, your own motivator. That clarity comes from within. In other words, I, the way I phrased it in the email is like, I don't need to come and charge your battery when you have that because you, you're able to be your own generator and charge your own battery. So what are some questions that I've asked people over time one-on-one -on -one, to help them maybe begin to figure out the answer to some of these questions? What is their mission? What is their passion? Where they should be directing and focusing their talents? Okay, so here's some solid questions you can ask yourself. I'm a big believer in life that a lot of times, the clarity and the answers we want come from asking ourselves the good quality questions. So here's some good quality questions that I think might begin to help you get that answer. Number one, no particular order, what do you love doing? What do you love doing? I understand you sit in an office and you, and you enter data into a computer all day. I understand that's what you do, but what, what do you love to do? Let's talk about that. Another question you can ask yourself is, what are you good at doing? Maybe there's something you've been told your whole life that you're really great at. What is that thing? Maybe we can direct your talent and your passion and focus can be pushed in that area. Another question is, let's say you knew that, God forbid, you only had three months left to live or, God forbid, only six months left to live. What would you do at that time? It could be that the answer to that question maybe other than spending time with your family, could be something that helps us dig out of the soil of you an area that you have a special feeling for, okay? Here's another question. It's a common question. What would you do 
with your life if you knew you could not fail. In other words, if you knew that if you attempted to do A, B, or C, you would guaranteed be successful, what would you try to do? What would be that area you would focus on? If you knew that money wouldn't be a problem, or if you needed money, you could raise the money, you would not be able to fail. So, you know, so what would you want to do? You'd want to make a, a school for children who have such and such problem. What would you want to do? The answer to that question many times helps us dig out that nugget. That's another idea. Here's another one. How can you add value to people's lives by doing what you're good at, such as that they'd be willing to part with cash, they'd be willing to pay you for what you're able to do? One of the greatest things in life is if you can figure out what you're passionate about and excites you and fuels you, and also you say, hey, you know what? I'm able to marry that talent and passion and ability for something I'm paid to do. I have a lot of fun in life because the things that um, I th I'm really excited about are actually things that solve problems for people in the marketplace. And thus, many of the things that I'm able to do, people are actually willing to pay me to do. That's pretty exciting. So it's pretty, another thing you think about, what is it that I'm able to do that I'm great at, that I'm excited about, that people are actually willing to part with their currency and do. Maybe they'll swipe a credit card. But it's the same idea. It doesn't have to be something that folds. It could be something that swipes. It doesn't have to be paper. Credit works as well. Okay, now another thing that I've spoken to people about that helps unlock maybe what are they excited about, their talent and their passion, what really moves them, is ask yourself this question. Let's say money was never an object again the rest of your life, okay? You won the Powerball, you got $500 million as a payout, you're all set, okay? You don't have to work anymore, you don't have to worry about money. What would you do with your time if money and paying bills was never a problem for you ever again, okay? What is the answer to that question? It well could be that the answer to that question is how you should be directing your time in terms of your passion and focus. The answer could be there, okay? Um, two other things that I'd like to share in closing, and that is that be open to the possibility of what is your mission or your purpose or something else. Be open to tweaking that over time. It could be that at the age of 30, you think it's one thing. By the age of 38, you realize that it's something that's a little bit of an offshoot of that. That's okay. It's not like you have to figure out the answer once when you're 21 or 31 or 41, and that's it. Till the grave, until your funeral, you're stuck with that answer. You could tweak it over time. And relatedly, the process of tweaking that over time, I think a lot of times comes from the exposure to new ideas. The more you read, the more interesting people you meet, the more stuff that comes into your mind, the more you'll have a varied experience and rich experience in life that can help be sort of like the fertilizer, which creates more ideas that helps bring out of you what are you passionate about, where you feel strong, and where you have talent. But anyway, I know you have it in you. Every one of us, I believe, and this is something that the Torah teaches, comes down into this world to accomplish something unique, special, that nobody in the world ever before or after is going to be able to do. We know you have it in you because that's the reason God made you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be needed here at all. Question is, what is it about and how do you figure that out and start working on it? Anyway, if you have other tools and ideas and questions you've asked, or yourself, or other people have asked, you've heard, that can help resolve that. I'm open to hearing it. I'd be happy to learn from you. You want to reach out to me directly, whether an idea for a future video clip, a question, or anything else, my email is director at jeln.org. It's Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman. Hope you'll subscribe to these classes on YouTube, and we will see you the next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.